So when I started this project, I had initially planned on using this berm rack C100 PID. Um, I have several of these for other projects I plan on making. I plan on doing several different smokers. And um, found out that, that one is not really what I want to use. For one thing, it doesn't convert to Fahrenheit, which uh, it's not the end of the world. It's still, you could do the conversion and just run it in Celsius. But all of my gauges on my smokers are in Fahrenheit and it is what I'm used to. Um, it's where my brain goes. So that right there is just not in my, um, it's not what I want to use. So also I'll add that the MyPen controllers, um, there is a lot more information, a lot more uh, videos on YouTube about how to set these up. There's actually a few guys that have actually taken the time to do uh, complete tutorials and map out the settings on the MyPen, which is very nice because then you can just go watch the video on how to do the settings that pertain to you. Um, not so much on the uh, on that little uh, Burmy. This one here, I have several of these for a larger smoker project that I'm uh, currently building. I've never shown that, but I will in the future. I'm going to put up. I'm going to end up doing away with my Weber grills out in the party house, and I'm actually going to put a bigger one. Well, I shouldn't say I'm going to do away with them. I'm going to keep them and use them here and there, but I'm going to actually build a larger smoker for out there that. Uh, that I'm going to use for our larger parties. Um, but these tie into that. These are a, a my pin and they are a TA6, which you'll notice they're taller than this one would be equivalent to a TA4. And I don't know the DIN on it. DIN would be like the size of it, but this is like four and this is six so this is a taller one that kind of plays uh that plays a role in what i'm going to do with that because i had planned on using this box and laying it sideways because of the feet and i could still use it i would just have to stand it up and then make the mount because i plan on mounting that up on the um up on that smoker anyway i didn't show any of the wiring of this thing because i've been tinkering with it i've done a whole video on this one but I ended up not putting it up because um, after I had used it for a little while and then I got this other one out I decided I'm not going to use this so I went ahead and all the wiring that I had done I have this thing actually doing a test run right now with a thermal couple on a little light bulb so theoretically what you have going on right now is a chicken incubator which you know you can set this up for temperature you can see how accurate it is it stays very accurate and if you look down you can see it well actually it's not signaling on there but you can see it on the uh, on the solid state relay see the light coming on but basically um, the wiring is, is generally the same. They give you a wiring diagram on the side and it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know your power in and then you have um, your alarm which that is just a switch. It's just a relay switch. So then after the alarm what you have are your two uh, wires that go out to the solid state relay and they are polarity sensitive. So you have to look at those on the diagram as well as on the um, solid state relay. You can see them on there. They have to be cor correct polarity or the relay will not function. Okay, and then the last ones are all for the uh, thermal couple hookup. So looking at the uh, thermal couple hookup, um, one of the things you have to uh, be aware of is that there are many different types of thermocouples depending on what application you are using or doing I should say so um, 
within this unit, you have to go in and actually program and tell the unit what thermal couple you're using. Uh, my plan is to eventually hook up the PT100 because of the longer probe so I can get out into the air of the smoker. To hook up the alarm, it's pretty simple. It's 110 volts that powers a converter. You could probably find alarms in 110 volt. Um, I just bought these small little tiny hobby type 12 volt ones which requires me to convert down. So I just bought a little tiny LED converter, which is more than substantial for running something like this. But it's 110 volts in, positive and negative, which you could hook it right in um, to your same source. Uh, it gets a little crowded on there, so you might want a terminal block or put some wire connectors in there or something. But the gist is uh, 110 volt in, then you get your uh, 12 volt out. And basically what would happen is one of your legs would hook to one of these and then the other two would run through the switch right there which would be three and four so when you have your alarm set up and it comes on and off it'll just complete it'll just complete the circuit and turn it on and off when well, i set my alarm low uh, you have to remember this thing's going to be blowing a fan over coals So when the temperature would drop due to lack of what well, we just call it feel because the wood source is the feel um, When I when I run out of feel or it gets low enough that it doesn't produce enough heat any longer I'll have that alarm set up and I program it right in there for 10 or so degrees 8 or 10 degrees if you're not familiar with a PID, uh, proportional integral derivative, what it does is it uh, it takes the parameters of where it is and it um, it assesses them basically. I probably won't explain it exactly correctly, but it sits there and, and constantly processes what is being uh, told to it by this thermocouple. And it does everything it can do to try to keep that target temp as close as it can to your set value. So my set value right now is 152 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's 152.2 on the bulb. And it's trying to maintain that temperature right there. I'm going to start getting this built up and mounted in this box. So a little bit about the box. These boxes are... There's a reason they're cheap. They're, they're pretty flimsy metal. They're not the easiest things to get a hole cut in. I used a Dremel and actually used part of, I used my punch station out in the garage, but it didn't punch it because it doesn't work on real thin stuff like this. But I got some of the corners punched out, but with just a Dremel or a four inch grinder cutters probably be the best thing to use. I just used a little Dremel wheel. Just a little cut off wheel like that. It takes a little while, but it works. But get the uh, get the plate put on there like so. I probably should paint this box first, but I don't even know if I'm gonna do that on this this one. But let's just get a clip. It slides in there, and you. Kind of smashes that little thing up against the uh, the front of the house and that's got little teeth so you can push and if you want to take it off you just release it right there and this one slides in like so you can see it smash and there you go it's ready to go in at the back punched out and we use two plugs like this one will be my input power the other be my power out to the fan and then the only the only other thing I'll have in here is that uh, I'll need to drill a hole in it for this plug and that it's hole and I'll put it right there 
and the thermocouple can plug right into it. I'll get all this hooked up and screwed in and start wiring it up. Um, this will be part two of just going over this right here. And then uh, part three, I'll actually have this built and I'll put it in the smoker and we'll check it out working. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a good one.